All right, so let's wrap this up by giving you a, a short teaser for our next topic, which is how do we take all of this and extend it to work with real numbers? All of this has been integers so far, um, but you know, often we're interested in storing numbers with fractions. And so it's worth thinking about how we might extend this in order to store a fractional value. So the relatively straightforward way of doing this is to sort of just extend the positional binary integers to binary fractions. So we'll designate a certain number of bits in the number for the fractional part, and then uh, the remainder will be uh, the integer. And so the bits will represent negative powers of two, just like the regular uh, digits represented positive powers of two. So for instance, this is the ones place, the twos place, and the fours place. So this would be the halves place, the quarters place, and the eighths place, respectively. And this is the, exactly the same as in decimal. So uh, you know we have the ones place, in decimal we would have the ones place, the tens place, and the hundreds place. So uh, in decimal we'd have the tenths place, the hundredths place, and the thousandths place. Uh, and so the value that's represented is just the summation of all the powers of two. And this uh, extends our binary representation very cleanly to be able to represent fractional numbers. However, uh, another problem is that for scientific applications, we really want to be able to store a huge range of values. So the same physics simulation might be working with values on the scale of galaxies all the way down to the scale of atoms. Uh, and doing this with fixed precision numbers, in other words, doing this where you've allocated some bits for the um, fractional part and some uh, bits for the integer part uh, is very difficult. Even with signed 64-bit integers, even if we, you know, perhaps allocated half for the whole number and half for the fraction, we still have a, a range that's actually relatively small, not really large enough for us to be able to represent uh, numbers greater than uh, approximately 2 to the uh, 10 raised to the ninth power, uh, which is sort of big for everyday usage, but not very large when you're thinking in terms of uh, the size of the galaxy and things like that. So um, the answer here is that we're going to move to something called scientific notation. And hopefully you remember this from high school. So the idea is that we're going to write these really large or really small numbers using something called a floating point representation. So it's going to be some number times uh, the base raised to some exponent. And you may remember from chemistry or physics or biology class that this is how you wrote very large or very small numbers. Uh, and what this does is it allows us to store that exponent part and the fractional part or the significant uh, separately. And we can store them using different representations that allows us greater flexibility in storing the range uh, or the exponent. Uh, and so the, the reason we call this floating point is because the decimal point floats on the number line uh, and the position of the point is based on the exponent. Because computers use binary, we're going to be using a base of two rather than a base of 10. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to split up our field that we use to represent a number into three different subfields. So we're going to have a sign bit, just like we did with integers. And then we're going to have some number of integers that is reserved for storing the exponent. So the part that we're raising into. This is where we're going to use that biased representation that we alluded to uh, when we were talking about integer representations. Uh, and then we're going to take the remaining bits and uh, allocate those as storing the fractional part of the number. So the actual value of the number that's being stored is going to be negative 1 raised to the sign bit. That gets us the sign part. And then we're going to multiply by 1 times f to get the fractional part. And then we're going to raise to the exponent. Uh, and that's going to get us our, our large dynamic range. Uh, and so that'll be uh, the next topic that we uh, handle, but I wanted to just go ahead and give you a very brief introduction to it now.